TitleMatchNetwork.com. 87 when Dynamite was out, you guys wrestled against Davy Boy, and he had a you know he had a different partner on. I think it was Chicago. He brought in the Crusher. What do you remember about that match? I remember pretty much that we were all pros. Crusher was an old guy that filled in, and kind of did everyone a favor by showing up, and right. everybody was trying really hard to uh, accommodate him. I mean, he was a legend, especially in that area, and I think we were all grateful that he showed up. And for me, it was just a personal thing to say I was in the ring with Crusher. And just like I was to say I was in the ring, I was in the Battle Royal in WrestleMania 2 with Bruno. Mm. It was just means something to me as a fan. There's right. little, that, that little kid in me because I, I was in the ring with Bruno Sarantino. Right. I was in the ring with the Crusher. And I was in the ring with uh, Iron Sheik. Oh. Well, the Sheik wasn't <laughs> an old guy. Uh, well, actually, I was going to ask you about Sheik. Uh, in 86, Vince did a lot of heel versus heel tag matches with you guys against the Funks and uh, Sheik and Volkov. And you guys got over really big as baby faces. I think it was in Boston in the match with Sheik and Volkov, actually. What was the rationale behind those matches? I think well, it was just uh, to keep the fans guessing, you know, keep them, you know, keep the interest, you know, make people think about stuff, you know. And I think that's good. I think that's a positive. I like, there's a lot of things I liked about the booking. I'm not sure who was doing the booking. Uh, back then, specifically coming up with all those concepts, it was Vince, it was George Scott. It Pat sounds Patterson. it sounds like it wasn't Pat Patterson so much as more Vince and uh, Pat Patterson had. A, yeah, you can say a lot about Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson had a great mind for. Uh, yeah, he was all laid out of what he wanted to do. He's one of the best finished men in the business. Yeah, I. Um, oh, I always Brett, had a lot of respect for Pat. Brett Pat Patterson. Uh, I told Brett for years, I said, God, you know, you're, you're doing these guys' jobs. And uh, well, Brett, uh, myself a little bit, but more so Brett, Pat Patterson, and the, and the bookers in the WWE and F, uh, uh, did the finishes and arranged a lot of them. Brett had a huge instrumental part in a lot of those finishes, not just our matches, but other top ones. Right, right. I think, uh, <clears throat> go back to those late 80s and early 90s and stuff like that. I was, I remember sitting in the dressing with Pat Patterson the Bulldogs, Dynamite, and Jim, and uh, Pat Patterson would sit down and go, well, what are we going to do? And, uh, I would just say, I would be in Dynamite. I think Dynamite and I always had a, an ability to see a lot of, we could see what we were like, almost like movie directors. And, uh, I hear lots of times I, I would start running a finish by, I said, I want this, and I'd start just talking. And I remember Pat Patterson stopping. This is in their early days. Um, saying, stop me, going, you can do that. And I said, look at him like almost like, yeah, what? No, I can do that. Say what? <laughs> the thing I learned when I went to my father, I was booking, basically I was booking when I was 20 years old. Right. 20 years old. I was coming up with eight, nine finishes a night, seven days a week. Eight, nine finishes, seven days a week, every week, every week, every night, every night. And good, I had the luck of traveling around the world to see a lot of different moves and stuff that I incorporated into my actual wrestling, like English style, Japanese style, this and that. But I really learned finishes because I had to. I had to come up with finishes for the whole show. At a time when my dad's business was kind of going down the toilet, so I had to. I was trying really hard to save my dad's business, so I was really conscious of coming up with a lot of creative stuff. And when I got to WWF, I don't think a lot of guys were capable of coming up with finishes. But I guess if there was Pat Patterson to come up with 50 of the finishes in a second, like one after another after another. And Dynamite was very good the same way. And we were together, sitting together, we could just sit there. We just invent stuff, come up, create stuff. And I can remember Pat Patterson, who had probably seen everything in the world, looking at me and going, you guys can do that? Oh, well, yeah, they can do that. And we go out there and do it. And when we did it, and we go out there and do it perfectly. I hear Pat Patterson would come back and he'd just be astounded. I can remember in particular one match with the Bulldogs where Davey uh, press slammed me and lost his balance and dropped a straddle down you know, the top rope. On the garden. In the garden. Boston I Park. remember. Mm -hmm. no, it was, Madison Square Garden. It was, uh, I think it was on primetime wrestling. They showed it on. Well, I know the first time we did it was in Boston. In Boston. And uh, I remember... Uh, I remember just creating in my head, and it was like, it was huge. The reaction was incredible. It was just, and uh, again, that's a situation where you can create stuff and invent stuff. And I, I was pretty good. I consider myself an innovator. I came to wrestling uh, ideas and stuff. 
Because I grew up in a world where in wrestling was one tackle, drop down, get it again. Everyone was doing the same. Everyone, everybody was just a cheap imitation of Dory Funk. Everybody kept wrestling the same style. I think that's when my dad's business kind of went. It started to go down because everybody, even the new wrestlers came into the territory just doing the same old spots. One tackle, drop down, get it again. You know, it was. Right. And so I, when I got into business, it was like, oh, we need to come up with something different that, you know, that, that they haven't seen. Dynamite was a real innovator. I think he was incredible. I, have, I, I miss his mind. But he had a great mind for the rest of the business. Oh, what a, what a mind. Oh, damn. He could come up with the stuff where he could just sit and talk about it. And, you know, the ladder match. There's a wrestler in Calgary. All get. the top matches in New York now. The ladder match, Rip. Uh, you can go on from the ladder match to the uh, uh, Chris Benoit and the. Do uh, we hang something over the, the turnbuckle? You know, the money match. And Coal Miner's Glove. Coal game. Miner's Glove match, uh, ladder match, and. Uh, well, there's four matches taken from Calgary. Uh, well, I know with Dynamite, <clears throat> he. Uh, he would sit there and just think of killing. I remember that, like Dan Crawford is a guy from Calgary, the real, the original Dan right. Crawford, because he hadn't thought of the uh, ladder match. But I can remember Dynamite was the one that came up with the finish. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then the way that Dynamite used the ladder is being uh, used right around. We do those uh, ladder matches in Regina, and these same ladder matches and the concepts were being used to top me. Dynamo is a real innovator you know, that I've never seen since. You know what I compare to Dynamo is myself, because I think I learned from him and off of him together. We came up with so much great well, stuff. Well, you and Dynamo put these things together in those such great times. Uh, mental of sitting there. We sit like we are right now, just sit there and go, how about this? Then we just build this match together in our heads. And the thing was that when we built it, I think both of us had this ability to picture our hands. And not just in single matches, but in tag scene with the Bulldogs. We sit there and envision the whole thing. And then go out there and do it exactly the way we said we like imagined it. Right. And that was that's the beauty of what I remember most about the dynamite is psychology and um, and uh, for all of us. You know, we were able to incorporate everybody's uh, best Qualities into it, into it and also innovate to create new stuff. So, yeah, just a few people that understand that business from the beginning to the end and they can envision that and you come up with a finish and go, oh, 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 that's great. How'd you, how'd you come up with that? Hmm. Would you ever want to be a road agent for Vince and, and help out with finishes now or no? I would like to. I have been. Right. Uh, not enough. I want to be a road agent just because of the road. Right. I think I always dreamed about not being on the road, huh. so it's hard for me to say I. Right, get the van. <laughs> yeah, the less planes, the less travel. And all that. But I really wonder what if things had never happened the way they did with me, if it's where I would be today and what kind of input I would have, impact I would have had on uh, just even the counsel and the advice I would have given Cousin Craig or Chris Van Because if, if things had happened in Montreal the way we were supposed to, Right. And I stayed with the company. I would have stayed, I'd still be there now. Right. And I think that I would have been an instrumental part in uh, the success of uh, where wrestling went from that point on. 